now this is leftover fabric that I'm using from a project that I, that I had because lycra material is very expensive so whenever I do a project from it I always try to save the extra fabric now we need to cut the front first okay I'm gonna lay this down on the fabric just like that now you're gonna probably have uh, the fabric that your, your, your fabric is not going to look like this, so you'll be able to lay one piece here and one piece here. But for me, I'm just going to pin this right here in place. And I'm going to pin this right here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this out because we know that this is going to work okay. So I'm going to turn it this way so that I can work with it. Because like I said, the front is cut on the fold. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut, but I'm just going to cut mine just the hairs larger, not much. Because remember, it is lycra, so it's going to stretch. Okay, now that I've got this cut out, I'm going to take the pins out. So now here is the front of the bathing suit. So now what we're going to do is you want to cut out the back. Now remember, you got some instructions on the bottom on how to cut the back. Because that's the beauty of sewing is that if you make a mistake you can just fix it now there is going to be one change on the back since this is going to be the back center seam I'm going to make this a half an inch bigger on this back side so when I go to cut this I'm cutting a half an inch bigger than it actually is because like I said, we're going to have a center seam down the back. And now I'm going to, oops, remember, I almost forgot to. Let's take the pins out. And remember, we're going to fold this down because now we're cutting the back. So let's fold this down. I got carried away with myself there. So now I bring this up to the top, which is going to help us save some fabric. And I'm going to move it in half an inch because I've already cut that. So let's bring this up as close as we can. Put the pin on it just like that and just like that and like that now remember the back you're going to cut an inch longer or wider and I'm going to go a little bit lower in the crotch area now I'm just going to go ahead and cut this all the way across because that's going to make it easier for me to work with it and show you guys so now we're going to cut this one inch my finger by the way the first measurement of my finger is one inch. So since my finger is a perfect one inch and I don't like drawing things out, I like freehand and stuff, I'm going to take my finger and use it as a measurement and I'm going to cut. And now I'm going to eye the rest of it out. Okay, so I made this one inch larger here, but then when I got here, I kind of tapered it off. Just go ahead and cut out the rest of the bathing suit. Now we have our bathing suit all cut out. So I'm going to cut my strap an inch and a half. So again, I have a one inch finger, so I'm doing an inch and a half, one, an inch and a half, or just use your ruler. I'm not in my case. I'm just eyeing it, inch and a half. Once I get it started, I'm going to fold it over and let it become my measurement. And I'm cutting, it's very thick, so the scissors a little challenging. So now we have the strap. I'm just going to leave it long. And that way, if she wants to cut it, we can just cut it and finish it off. So I'm going to leave it long. So here are your two back pieces. So the first thing we're going to do is put these right sides together. And we're going to stitch that seam down the back. Now, as far as finishing on a bathing suit, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you serge it. If you don't have a serger, zigzag it. But you don't want to do a French seam because it will be too bulky. So I'm going to serge mine. I'm using a polyester thread. Do not use cotton cotton is not going to work you must use a polyester thread so now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sew up that back seam we measured it for a half inch so you want to sew a half inch seam allowance and since you're sewing lycra you want to make sure that you're using a ballpoint needle because it's used for sewing stretch fabrics and also you want to use a stretch stitch um, that means you want to use a stitch that is looser So here is the back of the bathing suit sewn in. And the reason I did this because some people have an arch and this is going to give you an opportunity to 
sew this a little bit more. And since I already know that my client has an arch, so what I'm going to do, because here's her waist, I'm just going to go ahead and stitch in about an inch in her arch. Now you can't see that, but I'm going to put a pin right here. That's where the arch is. And I'm going to sew down to that pin. So to do that, like I said, the pin is right in the middle. I'm going to start at the top. And I can eye or I can see the pin. So I'm coming down to meet the pin. And once I meet the pin, now I want to go out to meet the end. So now I come back in the opposite direction to meet the pin. And now that takes care of that arch that's in the back. And to make sure that the fabric lays nice, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the arch. So now you can actually see the curve right here into the back. Now that the back is done, you want to take the front, you want to stitch the front and the back together at the side seam. So match them up and then stitch them in place. So now that the crotch is pinned in place and I did go back and I surged my um, back seam. So now you're just going to do the same thing by stitching the half inch stitch on the front and the back crotch. So now our bathing suit is pretty much done as far as all the construction. So what needs to be done now is the side seams need to be surged. And when you get to the crotch seams, you want to make sure that the crotch seams are surged toward the front and the back. So now we're going to turn our bathing suits. For the elastic, I'm using a quarter inch elastic. So I'm going to put my elastic and I'm going to extend my elastic a little bit farther than I need it. And I'm going to pull this section down over it and cover it over. Because remember we did a one inch seam allowance. So I'm going to put a pin there and I'm pinning through the elastic so the elastic will stay in place. And now I'm going to start at that seam, remove the pin, and this time I'm just simply sewing over the elastic to create a casing. So here is the back and here is the armhole section. So I'm going to pull this enough to bring it up here to the bodice, the top bodice. And I always like to have a little bit sticking out so I can cut it. That way I know I've got it attached. To start with, I'm going to stitch through the elastic. And then I'm going to turn and then stitch my casing to finish off. So now we have that upper section going into the front and so we're going to do the same thing on the other side but before we do that because this side is you want it a little bit stretchy so stretch it a little bit let's stretch the elastic a little bit and let's put a little bit of gather in there not much because this side was pretty good because it'll straighten out and it'll look straight so now that we got that now you want to stitch in the ditch to stop the elastic from being pulled from this upper section. So now that it's been stopped, now you can pull the elastic and the back gets gathered, but the upper section stays pretty straight. Now you want to see if the back or if the bust section measures what you need. So if I measure from one side to the other, because I need 22, it needs to measure 11 inches and as you can see it's 13 so you simply keep pulling until you get the desired measurement that you want so now I'm going to measure and see where this measures and I'm starting at the side seam because remember this is going to be curled up so now with that curled up I'm going to measure and see and it looks like it's 11 and a half so I'm going to pull it 
just a little bit more. And it's 10. And 10 is good, so I'm good with that. So now you want to take a pin and you're going to pin it right into that side seam and you're going to top stitch to stop it from going anywhere. Now that we've got the back where we want it, what you want to do now is do the same thing on this side that you did to the other side. Stitch it up and then pull the elastic and then we'll cut it. And now that takes care of the back. So what I'm going to do with the elastic, you want to pull the elastic tight and then snip it as close as you can because it will disappear and get close to the thread. And as you can see, it's just a little bit there. Again, pull the elastic and snip it and it disappears. So now that's pretty much it for the, the upper section or the back and the armholes. So now we want to work, work on the crotch section. So we're going to turn it. So you're going to do the same thing here that you did for the back section. Starting at the side seam. So now I'm going to take the elastic and I'm going to lay it down on the side, not the crotch area. Fold it over just like that and do a stitch or stick the pin in and then I'm going to stitch all the way around and then that way I can adjust it as I need it. I've ran the stitch around the opening of the leg and as you can see it's way too big. I'm going to pull the elastic and I'm going to gather it around all the way around to the beginning and as you can see the front portion starts to get smaller than the back and now you can see the difference because you really want the back to cover the buttocks really good so I'm going to pull this again making sure not to twist your elastic don't twist it by turning it this way what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this a little tighter than I think I need it because my this elastic is so stretchy, which is really cool. So I'm going to pull it a little bit more. So what you want to do is I'm going to put a pin right here so that I know that that's where I'm going to stop. But you notice when I stitched, I didn't stitch all the way up to close it up. I left an opening. And that's because you need to join the elastic. And that's very important. So I'm going to cut this elastic. What I'm going to do is, now that I've cut it, I'm going to pull the two together. Because it looks like it's about an inch or maybe three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to pull them both tight. Pull this one tight. And then that way I can overlap the two that same distance. So you want to overlap the distance that you're going to pull up. So if it's three quarters, you want to overlap that. So I'm going to put a pin there. And now I'm going to show you what you do to lock this in place. So now you're going to take the elastic and you're going to do a zigzag stitch, a smaller zigzag stitch. Line it up exact and then put your needle down. And now that it's lined up, you're going to lay it on top of each other and you're going to back stitch. You're going to zigzag over to cover the entire overlap. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. So see, I zigzagged over the overlap. So now it's covering both of it. It's not pretty, but it's sturdy. It's not going anywhere. And the reason you did a zigzag stitch is because the zigzag stretches. And you want this to stretch. So now you want to kind of stretch everything out. And as you can see, you get a really nice uniform stretch. All you want to do now is finish sewing the rest of the casing. So I want you to see what it looks like now that the casing is sewn on the leg portion. So what you want to do is repeat the same thing that you did there. Repeat it on the other side. Now that I've got both of the legs done, now we got to work on the top and it's very simple. I sewed my stitch and I used a stretch stitch but notice that if I pull the elastic straight it's kind of cool 
But because I used a stretch stitch, watch what happens. I can stretch it even further. If you don't use a stretch stitch to do this, once you pull this, you are going to pop the stitches. So now that we're going to do the strap, I'm going to use this magnetic stitch guide. It has a magnet on the inside and then it has these little wings that kind of help you guide your fabric. You place it here and you simply guide your fabric up against it. So I'm going to take my strap fabric and fold it in half and I'm going to place it up against my stitch guide. Now I'm going to sew the entire strap up against this guide. So now I'm going to turn it using my fabric turning tubes. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to top stitch the um, actual strap itself. So just go ahead and do that now that you've got it turned. Now that I've stitched the strap, I turned the strap and then I top stitched it. But you see by doing that stretch stitch, I can stretch my stitch. So now you want to turn the top down. And what I'm going to do, because I don't like threading fabric, so I'm going to turn this over on top of my strap. So now that the strap has been stitched inside the casing, you want to slide it over to get the fullness. And now what's left to do is to try it on to make sure it fits them. And once you've got it adjusted, we'll come back and show you exactly how to cut these off and finish them off. So now what you want to do, because the bathing suit is pretty much finished, you just want to finish off these ends. Now, mind you, the fabric does not unravel, so you just want to top stitch across both of those ends. By top stitching across those ends, you stop them from the threads coming undone because the fabric is not going to unravel, but the threads may come undone. And that's pretty much it. Then you would just simply tie it in the back. And there you have your simple and easy bathing suit. So I think this turned out rather nice. And I hope that you guys will try this. And I hope that this tip has been helpful. Happy sewing!